And John Fung once called concentration practice the sport of wise people. In other words, like any sport, it's something you want to do well, but you want to enjoy yourself while you're doing it. So you've got to find that right balance between sticking with it, mastering the technique, and having some fun. in the process. Otherwise, it gets grim and serious. And of course, our purpose is serious. The practice is serious. We're dealing with a big problem. We're dealing with the problem of suffering. But if you're grim about the path, that grimness begins to grind you down. So you have to learn how to take a light attitude. One of the skills in meditation is learning how to gladden the mind as you're practicing. In other words, what would gladden your mind right now? Maybe some thoughts of goodwill. Try to think of someone you've never extended goodwill to before and spread goodwill to that person. You might want to choose someone a little bit challenging. And take it as you would take a challenge in any sport. Here's a problem, here's a difficulty, but there must be a way around it and you're going to find it. They say that this is one of the hallmarks of someone who is not just good at a particular sport, but really good. Once they've mastered one problem, they figure out what's the next problem and the next. And they take joy in posing questions and learning how to answer them. Once you've thought thoughts of goodwill, next question is, how are you going to stay with the breath? Where would be a fun place to focus on the breath right now? Some place you haven't thought of before, something new, something different. John Fuhrman would sometimes talk about thinking of a pole of light inside the body, extending down from the middle of the head down to the spine. As you breathe in, think of the breath coming in from all directions into that pole of light. And as you breathe out, think of it going out in all directions from that pole of light. So you're not staying with just one spot. You've got a line in the body. That's your focal point. Another time I heard him talking about breathing into your bones. Think of all the bones in the body and the breath energy coming in. In other words, you've got to ventilate the mind a little bit, otherwise it gets stagnant, like, a, like the huts we have here during the day. I've been going into the empty huts and opening them up in the evening, and they're really stuffing because there's no circulation at all. Sometimes the temperature inside is actually cooler than the temperature outside, but the fact that nothing is moving, there's no ventilation, it feels hotter. And the mind can be that way, too. If you've got a particular idea about the meditation in mind and you just hold, hold, hold to it and don't have any opportunities for changing things a little bit, it gets stuffy. So think of things that will gladden the mind, things that will be new in your meditation. And that way you give yourself some, some staying power. You might also think about things that you're carrying in from the day or carrying in from other aspects of your life. Can you let go of them? A lot of things we hold on to as being really important in life, we define ourselves around it. But if you can't let them go at all, it's like having a muscle that's tensed up all the time. So think of something you tell yourself it would be impossible to let go of, and then say, kind of put it down for right now. Think the opposite thought, like that character in Through the Looking Glass. He said he'd like to think about three or four impossible things every morning before breakfast. Or think of something that would be ordinarily impossible for you to let go of, something you would define yourself around, and see if you can undefine yourself, at least for the time being. 
because you realize that everything you're holding in mind right now, you're going to have to let go of at some point. All your perceptions, all of your ideas. When the time comes to leave the body, you're going to have to leave a lot of those behind as well. It's good to get practice. Because the path is something that requires staying power. And a lot of staying power means letting go of things that are really unnecessary. It's like going camping. If you want to hike for a long time, you take a light burden. The lighter the burden, the longer you can hike. But for most of us, we have too many things in our knapsack. We're afraid we're going to miss this, we're afraid we're going to miss that, we've got to hold on to this, hold on to that. And as a result, we hardly get away from the trailhead at all. So anything that comes up in the meditation, just say, let go, let go, let go. You hold on to the breath, or whatever you've taken as your object, and just say, that's it, that's all I'm going to hold on to. And have a light attitude toward it. Again, a John Fung would say, you play with the meditation, but you don't play in a desultory way or a scatterbrain way. You play in the same way that a professional sports person would play at a sport. You keep at it, keep at it, keep at it, but find ways of making it interesting, find ways of making it challenging, and learn how to encourage yourself to be up for the challenge. This is what gives you staying power. I've been working on a project having to do with humor and the Pali Canon. There are two basic ways that's used. One is to encourage you to let go of things and not to be impressed by things that people in the world are generally impressed by. Say, the fact that there are devas out there. There's some people who think, wow, if I get to talk to a deva, I must be really special, and the deva might give me important information. Well, the Buddha has you question that. Or thinking that people who are rich and wealthy and powerful have something to be worth aspiring to. Well, you look at the lives of the kings in the time of the Buddha. They had a lot of the problems that everybody else has. Nothing special there. In other words, you use the discernment to give, your sense, give yourself a sense of distance. You can step back and realize, okay, I'm not enmeshed in those things. I don't have to be enmeshed in those things. Those are things I don't have to believe in or be impressed by. And there's a certain lightness that comes with that. The other use of humor is to look at the practice as something enjoyable. There's a really nice image of a bull elephant who's tired of being in the herd of elephants. He goes down to bathe, all the other elephants push up against him. He tries to drink clean water, but all the elephants have muddied the water. So he goes off to be alone. He can bathe without anybody bumping into him. When he drinks water, it's clear. And whenever he itches anywhere, he takes a branch off a tree and scratches himself with it. And the Buddha interprets this image as being like a person who's going off to meditate. You use your concentration to, to scratch wherever you, wherever you feel an itch. So where does your mind itch right now? Where does your body itch right now? Can you use the breath to scratch it? Can you use whatever your concentration topic is to scratch it? The image is nice and lighthearted. And so even though we're serious about the practice, and as I said, we're dealing with a serious problem the suffering in the mind. We want to have a light touch. Otherwise things get bogged down. I think I've told you about that Englishman who went across the Northwest Territories way back in the 1820s. The first recorded instance of an English person entrusting his life, his life 
to a band of Dene. And as they were going across the territory, of course, they were hunting. And sometimes they'd, they'd catch some game, and sometimes they wouldn't. On the days when they couldn't catch game, he said they tightened up their belts and they spent the time joking with one another as they walked along. In other words, to keep up their spirits. Otherwise, you start focusing on how hungry you are, and you get more and more miserable, and the trail seems more and more impossible. But if you can keep a light spirit about things, a long trail becomes shorter, a heavy load becomes lighter. So do what you can to keep your spirits up and to enjoy the meditation as a game. <laughs>